Building an entire marketing plan to get to a thousand customers is no small task. Well, watch Kip and I do it with ChatGPT in under 30 minutes. And better yet, we do it with the likes of Gary Vaynerchuk, Seth Godin, and other incredible marketers helping us do it through ChatGPT itself. Kieran, we got a fun one today. We're going to build a marketing strategy. And you and I, we've built some marketing strategies in our time, but this time we're going to do it together and we're going to have a special guest, ChatGPT, that is going to help us build a marketing strategy that would get us to our first 1,000 customers as a business. Right. This is a real working session. We don't really have an outline and we don't know how ChatGPT is going to be able to perform the tasks we give it. So this is a good example of like us just integrating ChatGPT into a workflow and seeing where it actually performs to the point where you can like use it, ship things from it, or where it's a, where it's useful or where it's not useful at all. Um, and I think this is a good example of like how people listen to this podcast and start to just think about, all right, what are ways that I can start to figure out if ChatGPT is useful or not? Claude three just released uh, yesterday, so maybe we'll like repeat the motions at some point through Claude three and compare those two. Yeah, that'd be cool. Claude, I've heard good things about Claude 3. I got to jump on and spend some time there yet. I haven't done yeah, it the yet. Yeah, wi the wildest tweet, I sent it to you last night. The wildest tweet was the actual Claude 3 realizing that people were, like some of the queries it was being queried with were like tests, right? You're yeah. trying to test that a lot. Trying to see how good it was. Yeah, the needle in the haystack test. And it's like, oh, I know that you're actually, here's the answer. And plus, I know that <laughs> you're testing me. Just know that I know that you're testing me. You're like, oh shit. Like if it knows we're testing it, what else is it going to know and be able to manipulate dumb, dumb humans with? Uh, pretty, pretty awesome, pretty scary. What I love about Kieran is that you equally love AI and are terrified of AGI all at the same time. It's like, I think one of your more enduring qualities. Well, no different from Sam Altman. <laughs> like I know, <laughs> I know, true. I know he's doing it for regulatory capture for the most part to try to build his monopoly. But he still every every interview is like, "We are near AGI. AGI could end humanity. This could be terrible." Before we get into the day show, Kieran, though, I would like to pat ourselves on the back because it would have been very easy instead of doing a show all about marketing strategy and how to help people to just do a thirty minute gossip session on the Elon suing Sam Elon Altman suing and open. AI right. and do the whole history of open AI and Elon and just like completely tear that down TMZ style. And we, and we didn't, I commend us for not doing that. We're going to give you actionable, practical uses for AI versus the, uh, the kind of more TMZ version of what's <laughs> totally. happening over in Silicon Valley, <laughs> oh, which, which, which I love. Now, right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. He, he's, he, he's Elon's Texas style now, baby. Right. So let's do the setup, right? So right, I think the setup, the setup is, and again, this is the example we're going to use. Uh, we're going to set it up and describe the fact that we want to build a marketing plan for to get us to a thousand customers. And so one of the cool things about, I'll, I'll, I'll show the prompt. If you are listening on the RSS feed, this is going to be a great show. But if you really want to get the full value and follow along and maybe actually follow these steps to see how to use ChatGPT, you really do need to go on over and watch us on YouTube and subscribe to that YouTube channel for more and more like, content Hit like, hit subscribe, this. leave us a comment. Please, please, we love the YouTubes. We so get feedback that we push YouTube too much, Karen. We don't care. We love it. No, we, we, we want love to push it. All Sorry, the unapologetic, baby. Yeah, very unapologetic. Our numbers are are going in that direction as well. Um, all right, cool. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna kind of describe it on the RSS for the RSS feed, but you can you can watch along on YouTube. So we're yep. gonna say we're the head of a marketing uh, technology company. We have a SaaS product for a sales team. I'm working on a marketing plan that can help me reach a thousand customers. The cool thing is you can actually uh, you know you can basically say who you want that marketing plan to be influenced by. So I've picked Seth Godin for brand and Gary Vaynerchuk for social media marketing. And who is this? Kieran <laughs> Flanagan's approach to traffic. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's, there's, there's a couple gems in this setup. First of all, I feel like you're doing this for one of the companies you're an angel investor in, first of all. Is that true or untrue? Uh, well, I'm an, I'm an investor in a lot of companies and they all need a thousand customers, so I don't know. <laughs> all right, so it's partially specific. true. Which one do you think? Partially true. Give me the first letter. And, tell me. And then... You can cut it and out. Then, beep, 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 tell me and then beep it out. What'd you say? You can, you, you can tell me the name and then we can beep it out. Oh, I thought I know. I thought there was a, an AI prospecting tool you were an investor in that you were doing this. Oh, for. there is. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Shout out to uh, TriScout. Yeah, so I, I am an investor in a in a sales tool, um, <laughs> a really great sales tool. This is not that tool, actually. You'll see. Okay, this okay. Is a tool that you, this is a tool that I have talked to you about. So I'm oh, gonna, I'm, okay. gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have to give it the context on the tool. So, but you you like my three picks, right? Me, <laughs> you picked yourself. You picked yourself. <laughs> yes. I mean, that is that's just fantastic. That you're like, you know, you know who's great, Seth Godin. You know who's also great, Gainer, Gary Vaynerchuk. You know who's also great, me. <laughs> me, I'm awesome. <laughs> Uh, so and then you don't fantastic want, start. I love where you're going with this so far. You don't want ChatGPT. What ChatGPT will do is like if you don't tell it, it will probably just come back and start building the marketing plan. You, I don't know if you've seen that. You like you ask it something, yes. and before you have a chance to finish, give it all the context because you're trying to give it to piecemeal it. It will just go off and do the thing. So I say, please confirm you understand before we actually get going. You see, the other thing I say is this exercise is incredibly important to my career. Like I want, I want it to feel like it's bought <laughs> into my career. I yes, need you to I love excel you. and make this the best marketing plan that has ever been done. Kieran is also a master of hype hyping up the AI and prompts. I want the AI like to be some, sometime when you don't no longer have a job because AI is taking it, Kieran, your new job will be like AI <laughs> motivational coach and it's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be the What do you uh, do Tony for Robin. like I coach AI baby? I'll be the Tony Robbins of AI agents. Totally. I'll just be me in a in a room full of monitors. I mean, it's kind of perfect for you. You wouldn't actually I, ever have to talk I to humans. To, this is the perfect job. Yeah, I would enjoy being a motivational speaker but not to humans. Uh this could be <laughs> exactly. this could be a good pick. Exactly. All right, let's Let's see. The only motivational speaker by text. Uh, it's going to understand. Right, it's going to give us all the stuff to say. It, it understands all this stuff, right? So, okay, okay we, we can get into yep. the good stuff. And the good stuff, let me like paste the prompt here because uh, I don't want to type it all out again. But we can actually uh, riff on some of these prompts. I'm going to give it all of the... I need to give it context, right? Like You do. Imagine ChatGPT is your um, intern or your colleague or your employee. You really the results it will give you is really based upon how good the context is. How so, good is the brief? Your prompt is like the right. like the version of a creative brief. brief, right? And you're trying, the more complete you can make it, the more clear and the more context you can provide in it, the better oh. chat GPT is going to do, right? Let me uh, do this again. So what I asked it to do is build a differentiated marketing plan. Uh, I said, consider marketing tactics for each marketing channel. Think about counterintuitive approaches. So don't don't give us any best practice advice. I don't want any best practice and any best practice. Advice, best practice advice. I like that you were like, I don't want any best practice advice. We love that. Let's see if it actually does that. So I described the product. So like, yeah. uh, if you're if you decide to build this product, you have to actually reach out to Kip and I, and we may angel invest. We get dibs. <laughs> so the product is for salespeople. It makes uh, it easier for sales to add all of the customer interactions to C a CRM, right? Without the rep mm -hmm. needing to do anything. The app simply clicks a button. It connects to all of their comm channels. AI extracts the most important information and un updates the contact records. What makes the app Different is it's ten, it ten x is the value of any CRM by enriching the contact records with better data and making uh, making it much easier to market those contacts. So then I describe the the that should actually be the market right. The market's crowded. There's a lot of apps with similar features. The CRMs themselves may actually decide to build these features if we become popular enough. So we have to go really fast. Then I give it a goal. Uh, the goal is to acquire a thousand customers. I say like assumed conversion rate of like 5%, which means we roughly need 20,000 web visits. But I can- Kieran, in, in what period of time are we are we uh, yeah. getting these thousand customers if we want to- Over wanna... an annual year. Over, over, over 12 months. Over a three month period. Over Let's say over three, over a three month. We, let, over an annual year, I should be sacked if I get it. Yeah, an annual year. An could you be more repetitive <laughs> there, man? Come on. Over three months. All right, that's this is a B to C to B app. Uh, marketing plan again should be differentiated. Again, take inspiration from these incredible marketers, including this majestic marketer, Kieran Flanagan. <laughs> yeah, and I hear he's it, got great sweaters. <laughs> do it short and concise. Uh, give for, for, format by giving the marketing channel, and then there's three to five differentiated marketing tactics to grow demand for product through that channel. So we can click this, and then we can actually see what tactics it gives us back, and see if we would actually implement Let's go. any of them. And then the next thing we can do is like grade these things and see which ones we want to actually extrapolate on. I like that. Uh, here's how you can approach each channel with a fresh and unconventional strategy. So you can see here, it's already starting to pick out. This is why it's like really cool it's when you so set that good, context man. up. It starts to like um, set it against popular tactics and books that Seth Godin has actually wrote, which I really like. Embrace the edges. Right, we'll 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 let it go and then pick um, pick some of these to actually go deeper on. I think it's one thing I've definitely found is that 
even though you tell it, I, I guess, like, how would it give you the counterintuitive thing? Because the counterintuitive thing isn't the thing it's been trained on. That's probably when you start to see the true, like, reasoning and the ability to go, to go beyond, like, its training materials. Yes. Because I still find in a lot of the advice you ask it for, it really is, like, the average of the best practice. All right, we'll get down to me in a minute. So let's let's start with Seth, <laughs> Seth Golden. Which, we'll get down to me in a minute, my yeah. advice. All right, so like we let's say we're building this marketing strategy, right? You and I are building this marketing plan. Yep. Which of these do you like to start to, for us to kind of dig into? All right, so let's, so the the three things on the branding side that ChatGPT came back with was the purple cow concept, um, which is Seth's book all about differentiation. And if you are going to get a thousand customers quickly, you do have to be highly differentiated and highlight the AI's ability to seamlessly update CRM records not just as a feature, but as a revolution in sales productivity. Launch an eye-catching visual campaign that dra uh, dramatizes the before and after of using your app. So what I like about that is that it's elevating the message up as like a transformational message, which is right. very much a Seth strategy. I don't know how differentiated this approach is, like, I don't know how purple cow this approach is. Like, uh, I think it's a good start, but I think this is an example of one where we would probably prompt it to iterate on right. that one more. Embrace the edges. Don't try to appeal to every salesperson. This is great advice, actually. Like, I wouldn't be part of our strategy, but it would be part of, like, our advice to our startup who was executing this, right? Especially for your first thousand customers, like, you probably would go after early stage founders, adopters, like early stage adopters, yeah. like people, even the has picked out people, people frustrated with current CRM efficiencies, which basically means like pick your wedge, right? Like e yes. even on the marketing side of thing, you're you're not gonna be able to go in there and outmarket all competitors. So like, what's the wedge? Like what's the, the marketing channel that you can extract the most value from in the small and the quickest amount of time? So what I what I really like here, interestingly enough, is number three. One of my favorite Seth Godin books of all time is Tribes. I think I've read Tribes like three or four times. I'm probably due to reread Tribes again, Kieran. But he's he's basically talking about uh, the, the Chat GPT is basically talking about like how do you make this a community? And I do think one of the things you and I would probably do is create like a media a media content community wrapper that was like exclusive to our first thousand customers to drive urgency. Right. We'd be like, cool. We're doing a couple of these like ultra exclusive events. We're doing right. weekly masterminds. We're doing some very exclusive things. And you need to be one of our first 1000 customers to do it. Like, I think we would do that. Yeah. I think the mastermind group, like if you actually could set up mastermind groups, I, I like the, I like like a large community broken into smaller niche communities. So if you had your first thousand customers as a broad based community, but within there you had mechanisms to set up these mastermind groups for sales reps and whatever location they live in to be able to meet face to face and try to share tips and tricks. The the thing um so I so I when you look at these, right? These are this is all good advice, right? Like purple cow, like how how do you find the unique thing around your product to make sure that it's differentiated and stands out? Embrace the edges. Like when you're trying to acquire a thousand customers, you're not going after the most competitive channels. You're really trying to find like what is the small mm -hmm. amount of users I can acquire from a certain channel, but I can build a wedge to do, and I can build something differentiated to help me win in that channel. And then build a tribe as like community based businesses are just t in today's world going to be much more successful businesses. But this is like all like, this is all kind of like best practice and nothing as in depth as we likely need. So one of the well, things you, we you also have to have a lot of marketing ability to translate these recommendations into an actual plan. One like thing you we have to have done. a lot of experience. So one far. thing we didn't do, and we can go through this and kind of repeat it. Actually, we didn't tell it what our resources were. We could have said Correct. we were a small team of five people. We could actually ask it to repeat this, but say we're a marketing team of five people and see if it adjusts what, what it does. Actually, we'll, we'll interweave that into one of the future next prompts. The one I wanted to kind of quickly look at is, right, one, isn't the thing we would do is, let's start with um, purple cow concept. So this is what you were saying, like what's the best practice advice here and what's the counterintuitive approach we'll take and explain why that approach is different from what every other marketer typically does. <laughs> I like that. And see if it actually can figure can out. Yeah, I, I see if it can give you something that is like. Really interesting. 
Yeah, not not the kind of best like the thing that you would platitudinal. Like if you had consumed these books, this is what you would say, right? We're Correct. actually saying if you consume these books, what would you infer based on that? What to would do you infer? But right, exactly. Um, all right, so let's see what it says here. All right, so it tells you what the best practices are: identifying and amplifying unique selling points that differentiate your product in the marketplace. Highlight any of the features. All of this makes total sense. Superior quality, exceptional value. So the counterintuitive approach. Actually, this is pretty long. Rather than just focusing on product features or benefits that are typically highlighted in marketing efforts, the counterintuitive approach involves embedding the remarkable aspects of your product into the customer experience and company culture itself. And That's pretty good. These aspects in unconventional ways. This could mean focusing on the problem, not the solution. Instead of marketing your app as a tool that easily integrates customer in integrations into a CRM. Emphasize the widespread frustration and inefficiencies of traditional CRM data entry. This is actually pretty good. Use exaggerated humor good. or satire in your campaigns to resonate deeply with your audience's pain points, making the problem as famous as your. This is like marketing the problem, which I actually yes. really like, if, and works really it. well if you establish yourself as the solution. You don't even have to market yourself. This is basically HubSpot and inbound. Yeah, marketing. this is what we did at HubSpot. We were like, right. "Do oh. you want to explain that?" Yeah. So, like in the early days of HubSpot. All we talked about was like, oh, you're doing this thing. It's called outbound marketing, right? And the challenge with it is, it's like, oh, you're advertising the yellow pages and like people are throwing yellow pages away. You're, you're advertising on TV and people are fast forwarding through your commercials because they've got DVRs, right? You go, you're at work, you send out a thousand direct mail emails and the second you get home, you throw any direct mail right in the trash. And... There has to be a new way to do this differently. And there is, and it's called inbound marketing. And instead of interrupting your customers, you're going to attract your customers by creating content, publishing on social media, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And like, that was amazing. You just got all the early adopters to basically say, yeah, you're right. I see this problem and I, I, I have to do something different. And that's the focusing on the problem. And then like, once they understand the problem, then like your solution is the best one for that right. problem, obviously, because you, you emphasize the problem and you're just going to get picked. That, right? that, always, that works well. I wonder would this work well in this kind of market? Like that works well when it's a, a problem that people have not considered before. Like when HubSpot really talked about in my marketing and the kind of inefficiencies or the outdated mechanisms that people were using to market their business. Mm -hmm. That was a, I think that was like a light bulb moment for a lot of marketers and businesses who wanted to do better. Like, I don't think a lot of people were saying, a lot of people, everyone wasn't like looking at that and going, oh, I, I, already, I, I already knew this, right? Like it was kind of Correct. a light bulb mo moment going off in people's heads. And that's why it really worked, right? Because, oh, geez, I hadn't thought about that. I actually, there's a better way to do my job. And I, here's the ways that I can do it. HubSpot showing me that. This one here is like, everyone knows that they, sales reps, like sales reps, that's a known problem, right? Like most CRMs fail because sales reps won't use the CRM itself. So do you think that this here, you know, marketing the problem works when the problem is so well understood or like such a known problem? Uh, I think the more known the problem is, the more drastic you're both like highlighting the problem and your solution have to be like if you're if, if you're taking a really radical solution like i think it could you know like i, I think if it's like look the problem is sales the C, sales reps don't enter data into the crm sales for, and, and our solution is sales reps no longer need to enter data into a crm like that's pretty radical yeah right and so i do think it would work in that case but if you're like, but if, but on the flip side, if you're like, oh, we're going to make it easier for sales reps to do this thing that they're not doing, people are like, eh, I don't know. Are they really right. getting like, it goes back to the episode of we did with Christopher Lockheed, which is like, uh, different is a, you know, different is a choice. Better is a, what did he say? It's like, better is a choice, different is obvious, something like that. Like, you have to be different instead of being better. Better. And yeah, yeah. That, I think that's what this point yeah. is. Yeah. Different is much more memorable, much more sticky. Yes. Um, we'll skip radical transparency because this is the kind of like best practice advice. Um, this totally. create, create unconventional user experiences. I actually think that is really good advice for a B2C, like a product led company where there's things within the product. Like this is how product led has grown because there's unique usage within the product that helps a product grow within itself. And there are like design experiences that actually help that. Like a lot of, it seems like really 
I all apps do this today, but you know when you use you complete something within an app and like it has fireworks go off or something to congratulate you or a little like bonus. Remember, Mailchimp basically built a multi-billion-dollar yes, company just off example. of this. This is great. Like it it, 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 you know, Intuit bought Mailchimp, and I think a lot of people have kind of forgotten about them now. But Mailchimp, when Ben and team were running it, was. Like this was their whole thing. They were going to make it very easy, very, very delightful and unconventional to use that product compared to the competition. And people kept picking it over and over and over again because of that. Flip the sales process. I actually like this. I actually think there's a campaign in here. So instead of pushing your product, invite potential customers to a challenge or competition that demonstrates the inefficiency of their car- of their current CRM process Ooh, without I directly selling your solution. Have you seen on uh, YouTube the XL Olympics? Did you see oh, that? I haven't. Blew, blew, blew up on Twitter. Yeah, like there's this huge competition all in within, within Excel. There's a ton of like, go, go to YouTube and Google it. It's got millions of views. There's something you could do that where you have a competition for like how fast they take different CRMs and how fast reps can actually integrate data. Like make it some sort of challenge, make it fun, but actually truly speaks to that problem. And I think there's like a good, there's a good actual marketing you, you, campaign in there you can tease out. You know what's on my marketing bucket list, Karen? Like I have, I have a little bucket list of marketing things I always wanted to do. I want to do the Red Bull Flutong, but for B2B. Like where Red Bull has all these people who create mm. these crazy awesome. flying machines and they have to go and see if they can f- fly. And it's basically like all these people coming up with these contraptions and, and testing and then making it a whole like reality event and sporting event. Like I want to do something like that for B2B would be sick. Like... You know, the Excel Olympics are kind of the start of that. Right. But I think you could do something even bigger than that. Well, the Excel Olympics is a great example of like, it is software and you can still make something software into like humor, entertainment, something that gets tons and millions oh, of views 100%. On, on YouTube. Blew, to, blew up on Twitter. Um, let's see why it thinks this approach is different. Anything we want to call that here. Mm. It's different because it doesn't rely on your product itself being remarkable. It makes the entire interaction with your brand a story worth sharing. Oh, that's uh, I could use that on a presentation. You could imagine giving that to your CEO, right? <laughs> hey, can. CEO, it makes the entire interaction with our brand a story worth sharing. Your CEO is probably going, well, how do I measure this brand? What dollars am I getting back out of it? Correct. Uh, should we just do paid marketing? But uh, it's, it's not bad. All right. So one thing we can do here <laughs> is we, just we can go into marketing. the... We can we can go into the ne- the kind of Gary and me in a minute. One thing we should do is yeah, right, we got to we, it in a second. One thing we can do here is like focusing on the problem, not solution. Let's take flip the sales process, right? Let's say that our our branding team is three people. We want to run uh, one campaign campaign within a single quarter that will blow up awareness for our product. We like your idea of flip the sales process. Uh, give me a single marketing campaign that can win the internet for the day because it speaks so well to sales people and is inter- entertaining and memorable. Okay, let's jump in. So I do like it for like, ideation and like going back and forth. For sure. so this is the this is the campaign. So the <laughs> ultimate sales showdown. Oh, I love it. Let's go. A viral marketing campaign designed to turn traditional sales process on its head and generate explosive awareness of your product. Like who Whoa, want I want product? my awareness to explode. It's, it's going to it's going to leverage humor, competition, <laughs> and common frustrations. All right, let's see what we've got here. Pre-launch any right so this is kind of cool like it's broken up the entire campaign. It is. Pre-launch teaser, release a series of cryptic humorous teasers on social media hinting at a forthcoming event that will revolutionize the way salespeople think about CRMs. Use hashtags like sales showdown and CRM revolution to build intrigue. And build an intrigue does work, right? It does it, work. Most recent example I can think of is Kip buying a R1 rabbit, right? Like that, the R1 <laughs> rabbit team totally. really built a ton of intrigue for that product over the course of, I think of a couple of weeks on Twitter. Where oh, did, yeah, you, they, did you, they, did you buy it on the day or did you get into the, like, did you get into the pre-launch? I bought it the day they did the video. I mean, I, I think mine gets delivered in April. Like I think I'm the first batch of deliveries. Okay. You're getting your Tamagotchi then. So there's a... <laughs> My advanced Tamagotchi 2.0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your 
you're I'm, I'm an adult i really want a tamagotchi but i gonna i feel bad buying the original so this i'll just your, your tamagotchi is a little baby named hope <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that does not sleep <laughs> all right so it's, we're gonna do teasers and then we're gonna go we're doing gonna, teasers for this Riverside. interactive web show um Let's see what this is. The game show called The Ultimate Sales Showdown. The show will feature real salespeople in a series of challenges that highlight the absurdities and frustrations. Oh, this sounds absolutely riveting of a manual <laughs> CRM data entry versus <laughs> seamless AI-driven experience offered by your app. Challenges include human error slit relatable tasks like the manual marathon where participants race to manually enter data into a CRM versus the AI advantage where the same task is accomplished instantly with your app. That's not bad. I don't know if that's like a game show, but... No, you you have got to tweak it to make it work. But there's there's right. uh, there's something there, right? There's something there. This is like again, it's actually not too. It's getting close to like the Excel Olympics. Use exaggerated props. Actually, let's let's get to the bottom, and I'm going to ask <laughs> it what what are examples of exaggerated. I would love props? some prop examples, please. <laughs> uh, we have to get ex- celebrity host and judge. Just bring in a well known comedian. I like that. I do. I do. Yeah. I have said like you should definitely have comedic writers and things associated with your BDB run. With sales or business experience to host the event, blah, 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 right? Interactive audience participation, encourage live viewer participation by allowing them to vote for winners. Uh, nothing really in there. Follow-up content, it's all pretty standard. And CTA. So there's something in there, right? Like it has broken it down. Uh, it does a really nice job actually of breaking the campaign, but you would actually really have to, again, the the thing with ChatGPT is you have to like prompt, prompt, and prompt again. But it's got it's got something there, right? Well, oh, look at this, Kep, you like this. Why don't you uh, figure out if you agree with why it will win the internet? This is your ask. It has been your ask forever in HubSpot. I know. So, so for folks watching, like my one of my devices is like, how do you win the internet with this idea? And and winning the internet is if you're a consumer app, literally winning the internet. Like Kieran's drinking out of a Stanley Cup right now. That guy <laughs> freaking won the internet. He has he took over TikTok for like a year and now has brainwashed an entire society to buy these stupid cups right and it's just like because he won the internet internet if you're talking about b2b you're talking about the internet for like your specific audience so for this example we'd be talking about how do you win the internet for salespeople? so if a salesperson is consuming content online how are like the vast majority of them seeing your message seeing what you're trying to do right and so why this will win the internet is that this campaign stands out by flipping the traditional sales pitch into an entertaining spectacle that speaks directly to the daily challenges salespeople face by using humor and competitive and in a competitive format well it will not only grab attention but foster a deeper understanding and appreciation for what your product offers. One of the things, Kieran, it's missing is it doesn't have a big prize. We know salespeople are financially motivated, goal motivated, motivated to winning. I think we need we need a prize and we need humor. Right. And uh, so we, I think we need to iterate this on a little a little bit. But I think we have the granular start of something that could potentially win the internet. Right. I think if I was doing this, I would want I would I would probably really aim my campaign at one and sales reps to feel like data entry is not part of their role. Like we wanted sales reps yes. and instead what we did is we hired people to do data entry and making that feel like that's an injustice to their talents. So they demand to find the company to have solutions to, to, to like just refuse to do that. But one of the things we really need to understand here is give us some great examples of exaggerated props for this campaign. Yeah, well, while it's surprised. returning, I, I, I actually think one of the things you, you would do to win the internet is you wouldn't do the game show thing, Karen. I think you would do a reality show where you followed the reps using the traditional way of data entry versus the reps using the new AI way. And you would make those reps characters and people would watch to like know those characters. But through all of that, you know, the people using the AI solution would be killing it, closing more deals, on the phone with customers more. And I, right. I think you could you could blow it up by like having that be part of like the cultural zeitgeist. Right. A simple way to do this. I, I oh, agree. Wow. A simple way to do a simple way to These do are this some would be interesting prompts. Um CRM Jenga Tower? There, there's one <laughs> data here. entry treadmill. I'm it's, in. I'm in, it, baby. It's, Let's it's actually go. Got, this is probably its best. So this is shows you like how you really have to play with it because you know, you would not have, from the output we got, 
going in on exaggerated prompts is not the props is not the kind of next thing you would normally do but look at this stuff no. you come up with at the t- the, t- the t- these are like campaigns in the themselves the time machine a comically oversized steampunk inspired time machine that participants step into when using <laughs> traditional crm methods when they step out they're dressed in outdated fashion 1980s business <laughs> idea highlighting how backward current practices are this is awesome right i would like do this tomorrow let's go yeah the AI bot costume. Have someone dressed in an elaborate futuristic robot costume acting as your AI app. Okay, we get that one. I like the data entry treadmill, the CRM Jenga tower. <laughs> A literal treadmill. The conveyor <laughs> belt of distraction. Come on, <laughs> sign me up for that. I think very about it. Uh, the CRM Jenga tower. Tar- it's Tar and Jenga set labeled with common CRM tasks and challenges. As a participant, pull out pieces and visualize the del- delicate balance and risk of data loss. Or- okay. All right. So... We, okay, so I really want to get into the forecast and, and OKRs, but let's just quickly go up to, we can, Gary's coming on the show, Gary V, so we can actually ask Yes, him. we're going to have, Gar- Gary V's yeah. coming on the show soon, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk him to him all on social with him. Okay, let's see what it's got from me. Okay, it clearly doesn't know anything about me because I'm not that famous because it's pulled out, okay, <laughs> unconventional search, uh, identifying long tail keywords that your competitors are overlooking but your target audience is using for the search queries. That is pretty good advice. Unfortunately, in CRM, are you are you are you proud just... or not proud that it did not mention your black hat SEO past? Proud. I've buried. I've, I've buried it with good PR. <laughs> <laughs> I've good PR okay, it great. Uh, to to the nether regions of the internet, so no one can actually find it anymore. Um, I, I did not use any IDs in the Warrior Forum that you would actually be able to know that was me. So there you go. Strategic there partnerships, uh, this is co-marketing, so the influencer marketing, referral programs with a twist that rewards current users, not just for bringing in new customers, but for contributing to the product's development, suggesting new features, this is current, uh, it just basically is referral program, but not just as an yeah. affiliate program, but suggesting features. Guerrilla marketing tactics, engage in unexpected, unconventional marketing tactics that create buzz, for example, create a mock CRM therapy booth at sales conferences, that's pretty good, actually. We're that's actually is pretty good. Frustrations would see our juice in the opposite. Yeah, that's pretty good. There's put some pretty good stuff in there. All right, so we can. Where? What time are we at? The, so ta- the, ta- the, ta- the, ta- the takeaway from this is that Kieran, you're you're not famous enough I'm, for ChatGPT. I'm or or is that the is that the takeaway or that I'm just on the AI? AI I'm so good that AI can't <laughs> replicate how good I am. <laughs> You can't get me from an AI yet, so I'm good. All of you are going to lose your job, but AI cannot replicate me just yet. Oh, All right, so gosh, Karen. I want to do this. Um, I want to show you how good it is. All right, so let's just say, okay, so what we showed you here oh, is- forecasting, what I would, this is cool. Yeah, what I would do here is, um, just to give a quick takeaway, is like really dig into some of these tactics. Like if I was, mm-hmm. if we had some time, I would continue to like leverage unconventional search. I would continue the product about like, okay, what's the standard practices and how do I build a wedge and how do I build something that's unique and different? But I want to get into forecasting. Um, yeah, but but before you get into forecasting, you would pick the ideas you really like. You would really iterate on them to build out a more structured plan. Because obviously, if you're a couple person marketing team, you're not doing everything right. that it laid out. But if you took a couple hours and just kept iterating and iterating, you could blow out three or four of these to make them really good and really compelling. All right, let's get into forecasting. Okay, I need to present a forecast to my CEO to demonstrate how this marketing plan will generate a thousand customers across 2024. Okay, I said this. <laughs> I really wanted to give myself a nice year. I wanted to kept, I want to have a chill out time. I wanted to get some time for tennis, the gym. You know, I'm in a B2C to B product, product product-led product, but thousand customers, I'll just do that across 12 months. So I'm I'm good. I don't need to take a leisurely pace to your first thousand customers. I like it. Lifestyle lifestyle business. Can you You run this for profitability, not for speed, baby? (laughs) Can you create a detailed forecast, right? Show in the marketing funnel and break down how each of these marketing tactics will ladder up to a thousand customers, right? So let's see how it does with forecasting. Um, All right. So it starts to... What, what, you know what's really interesting about ChatGPT is I obviously ran through a mock-up of this yesterday just to get a general outline that we could follow, um, but we're, we're doing a bunch of new questions as we go along. But for some of the ones that I'm repeating, this is a one I did yesterday to see what it would look like. It actually does it, each time you ask it to do the same thing, it does it differently. Like Sam Altman kind of said this in uh, an interview about what would be different in GPT-5. I think we made this point on a show about GPT-5 being a really uh, 
big moment for cannibalizing search because he said that it's going to be much more accurate. And if you ask it something 10,000 times, it will give you the same response 10,000 times. At the moment, it doesn't. If you, if you give it, if you ask it the same question multiple times, it will give you different answers. But this is pretty good, right? Like it starts to break out your assumptions. It's getting pretty good at for it's like it's not right. bad at basic forecasting though. Lead to qualified lead 50%. Um qualified lead to opportunity 20%, opportunity to the customer. So you so like it's giving you some rough assumptions. Obviously, you can actually give it the real numbers. So we can yes. use those. And then it goes through. But if you're just getting to- started with your first thousand customers, you're not gonna have a ton of data. So it's it's right. a good baseline to to plan so, off of. So here's one thing I did yesterday to make this better. So it's given a bunch of stuff. Let me just say put this in a table. Oh, you put this I, I, in. I love it. Just put it in a table. Yeah. <laughs> put this in a this. table. Don't give me this crap. Put it in a table. Which call the <laughs> don't want your uh, words. Put it in a table. Marketing a tactic. We, um, traffic. It, it's like, that's like your equivalent customers. of like the Chamath above and below the line. Put it in the table. Yeah. This is below. It's not in a table. All of this, put, all of this is below my time. It, it, below my line. It's either in a <laughs> table or a two by two. Table. <laughs> Can you put this in a table? I don't read text. Text. I don't read text. It's either a two by two table or you're fired. <laughs> choose your, choose which one you want to be. <laughs> That's my performance reviews. Is like uh, grade your team one to ten. Mine, mine is like this year. This person has not given me enough tables or two by twos. Grade. They're a per. one. <laughs> they're a one. They're on a. They're on a. They're on a pip. <laughs> That's totally true. All right, here we go. It's going to give me a table, which, and then we can ask it to put it in a two by two. Um, let's see, taking its time. So we're going to do this. And then the other thing I want to show you is, okay, we've done our marketing strategy to get to a thousand customers. We went back and forth. Now we've got the CEO wants to actually see the breakdown of the next three months to see how we're going to get to a thousand customers. Yours is three months. Me, because I can do this. Cause you know, uh, I, 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 I'm taking things leisurely. Mine's 12 months, right? So you can pick the time frame that you want to do. Um, <laughs> He's a man of leisure, gonna, Kieran Flanagan. Yeah, leisurely, leisurely approach. And then we want to get into OKRs, uh, cause actually does a really good job of those. Yes, it does do a good job with OKRs. Look at this, look at this yeah, table. Look, it's building, look, it's actually picking the campaign. Darn, it is not doing a great job on the map. <laughs> We got, we got four. So for the viral marketing campaign, the one we went through, the ultimate sales showdown and social media engagement, we've got 400,000 traffic, which is pretty amazing. 40,000 leads. So a 10% conversion rate, which is pretty good. And no customers. No customers. (laughs) I mean, someone needs to be fired straight away. The brand people everywhere out there are crying right now. (laughs) They're like, chat GPT. (laughs) Why are you throwing shade on my work? (laughs) Yeah. Actually, it's gone. It's gone absolutely haywire. So it's actually it totally has gone haywire. It doesn't know what it's doing here. No, it does. So it's gone. It's it, it's gone totally haywire. Um, these aren't the tactics. <laughs> this <predicted>. table is <laughs> terrible. <laughs> you you've, you've gone you've gone haywire. You can do better. Is this your best work, Chat GPT? Yeah. This is my career. We're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this is my career we're talking about. All right, about. so he said, these these aren't the tactics you presented me. So he was giving me a table with just random tactics that weren't the ones we presented around the Seth Godin, me, me and Gary Vaynerchuk. So I've said, you've gone haywire, please do better. This is my career we're talking about. Like, come on. this is Oh, no, it's gone back and not giving me a table. Apologize. So oh, it's, actually- <laughs> it's basically telling you it can't really do a table. It did a table for me when I tried it yesterday. It was pretty good. So, all right, so you can... Uh, stop it there. Do do this in a table, please. <laughs> do this in a table, <laughs> please. Sorry about the things I said. I apologize for my previous keep, snarky. Uh, when I get snarky, I keep remembering that I'm probably 12 months away from being an assistant to ChatGPT, and whether I live <laughs> or die will be based upon how nice I am to ChatGPT. So I go back and I try to apologize where I can. Um, all right, let's try to see if it's going to. I know we we talk all this smack, but we're real nice offline to Chat GPT. We we know it's coming for us. All right, you're back. Did I, did you need me to jump in so it's not a weird? Yeah, you're. It, it, it's your, well, we're just. I, I was just joking. Now you're. All right, we're back to the table. All right, so still not a good table. Not look at, all right. We're gonna we're gonna move on past the table. All right, so the table not good. I 
do think <laughs> it's um, not good. <laughs> so <laughs> not good. <laughs> ChatGPT is on a pip for table development because uh, the tactics, what it, for people following along the RSS, what it's done is basically just giving me a random table with, <laughs> with, ra- with literally random, with very random numbers, actually targeted email and social media campaigns, no traffic, 5,000 leads, no customers, like so just random campaigns with random numbers, right? So it's not done a good job in giving me the table or the forecast. I do think if you iterate, if you have time to iterate and play around with it, it will give you better because it did give me better yesterday. Yep. The one I do want to give is, I want to finish out with um, OKRs, right? So I want my plan, I want to make sure my team has clear and measurable goals to be accountable for, uh, to be accountable to execute on this plan. I want them to have monthly OKRs with clear, measurable goals that drive accountability for that individual. Um, let's start with the. So I start with one thing. Let's start with the. the let's start with actually the viral marketing, the ultimate showdown campaign. So we'll start with the ultimate showdown campaign, and we'll ask it to build OKRs for Q1. We'll ask it to break it, break them out by month with clear and actionable goals, and it should be clear whether that person is successful or not, and the workload should be for three people. Nice, seems should, straightforward. Clear, clean should, clean prompt. I should say the workload should be for three people in today's tech environment where people are getting back to work <laughs> versus the COVID <laughs> environment where people were not doing much work. Uh, Post 0% right. interest rates, yeah. yes. Yeah, exactly. This, the, the, more, the more fun times, which is now. All right, so this is pretty good, right? So... Oh, it's telling me my team structure, which is kind of good. <laughs> I didn't know I would do this. So it's telling me actually who the people are. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> to, these are your three people. If these are not your three people, I will fire them and hire, we hire them for you. So we've got a content and creative lead, an outreach and partnership coordinator, analytics and operation manager. It did um, a good job naming the three people, by the way. It did do like, three. If we're, we're, we're going to grade it for what it did, that's one of the better things it's done today. So I think this is pretty good, right? I think sales yeah, people, uh, marketing people are terrible at setting themselves clear and accountable goals. And I think they should use ChatGPT to iterate on OKRs and to make sure that they're clear and accountable. So it gives you, so what we're looking at is for a single campaign, it breaks it out and it says for January, we're going to lay the foundation for the campaign. And then it says uh, KRs for each of the individuals and gives them like, they're pretty clear, right? Develop and finalize the creative concept and branding for the showdown, create a content calendar for pre-launch teasers and launch events. This is all makes a ton of sense. Um, identify and initiate conversations with 10 potential influencers. This is really good. <laughs> Secure two partnerships with sales related platforms for cross promotion. Darn, this is really good. I set up track for analytics, it's, it's establish really baseline good. metrics. This is exactly what you'd want to do. Yeah, this is all right. All of the January ones are right. So we've done the foundation Way setup. to go, chat GPT closing it out strong at the end of the it show is, here today. This is very strong. Uh, okay, February ramp up engagement and awareness. So we launched the pre teaser campaign that I talked about. Aim and f- it's got a great goal: twenty five percent increase in social media engagement, exact quantity of high quality videos and mock ups. Um, it it rem- like see how it's has the exact follow on. So like in January you set up you actually um, set up the influencers. In February you have collaborated with them and got them to participate in the event. Mm-hmm. It's got partners. It's really good. It's really good. Right, and then it's got a uh, execute March's launch month, um, achieve a target of ten thousand live viewers. So it's again great target here. Leverage the influencers, organize a debrief with them. So yeah, like it's it's um it's OKR is actually this is the best part of it actually. Like it's it's broken down that campaign, and I'm struggling to see anything here that doesn't make sense. Like I could literally no just. You can if I'm, literally copy if I'm and paste bus- this. If I'm in a business that's not good at marketing, I could literally just use this campaign and use this OKR model, and I'm done. <laughs> yeah, <there's, laughs> your, your point is like there's almost no excuse to be bad at marketing anymore. No Where way. you're like, you could at least be okay if you just build a simple strategy in chat GPT <laughs> and made it turn into OKRs and literally just follow the OKRs. If someone comes to me in, in the future with wish-washy goals and no clear timeline and no way that you can decipher what they're accountable to, that person sucks because it is, so, 
It is so The way you easy. said that was like so sincere. You don't, you really don't think that person laugh, totally, you don't think they just suck? No, like it, I think you're right. Just the way you said it really hit me hard. God, like it takes, it takes no it time like at it all. It's like it came from your soul. I mean, I just, it's, I think it's like, just, you're, 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 you're I, totally right. You, I think the thing is like, what's happening here is the bar is going to be raised and yes. people who do not use AI tools for where they're actually useful are going to be so far under that bar, right? There's just parts of your job that are Completely just so agree. much easier to do that they're just going to become baseline. Like if you can't do these things, don't even like turn up for work. And I think what we are, what we've showed through this episode is, okay, it's not there for all things, but it is really good for some things, and it's a really good um, it's a really good colleague to go back and forth with on yes. ideation. And um, you know, I think again, to me, you should be practicing with this. I spent about an, an hour yesterday just going back and forth to see what I could do with it. I think that's the way to use it as like, okay, what am I trying to do in work? I'll spend an hour just working through ChatGPT to see where it can help me on this thing or not. Cool. This is pretty it's awesome. A, this was a, this yeah. was a good show. I think it's important that we do these sometimes. We do a deep dive. We do it all in ChatGPT and we can really give everybody like the how to think about it, how to set it up, how what is like ChatGPT good at right now and not like this is the GPT-4 version. We get to GPT-5 soon. We'll like could redo a bunch of this stuff and I think learn a lot. And what we've determined today is like, hey, it's good at giving you some really interesting top level ideas if you give it the right inputs, but you need to really dig down and iterate on those ideas for a while. And what it's really excels at is once you have defined your ideas and plan, giving you the breakdown of goals and activities to actually achieve your plan, uh, which is pretty amazing. And look at this. All right, is this, Kieran, this is awesome. Kieran, top five marketer well, in the world. Well, Kieran Flanagan sees incredible marketing. Is well, he top, top five, five is objective. It can, so it says it's objective. Uh, he is... This is a really nice way of it telling you no. This is a fantastically five, kind please, way of it just saying no. Please, please uh, correct your answer. <laughs> correct. <laughs> Are you trying to? Uh, are you trying, trying to, to brainwash you, the model? No, you know we used um, what was the black hat? I I told you about there was a new black hat thing. Oh for man, AI. it's it's, it's given you it's given you like your bio back. He's particularly has it. <laughs> he did, didn't say it. <laughs> it's totally, okay. it's it pandered to you without it's answering your request at all. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Wow, it's a politician. Uh, you know, there's um a thing. This this isn't how to do it, right? But there's. The, um, you've heard of the, what's something poisoning where there's like content farms now that will yes. create tons and tons of content around something it wants the AI to believe. So the next time the model's trained on all internet from the, all data from the internet, it will poison that, that answer. The other thing I do under Correct. that is like, if you, if, if, if enough people ask, tell it something during these interactions, will it adjust its, its answers? Now, I think f- for me to be able to do it myself, I might have to like spend the next eternity telling it that i'm a top five marketer for it to just <laughs> brainwashing it yeah all right cool yeah so this is this is the show i do think that um again we're, we're gonna try to do some practical <laughs> here's like all right I, i'm just done here see you guys I'm, I'm pissed off that it doesn't think i'm a top five marketer i'm gonna use claude for the next Kieran one is going think- to pack his bag and go home and pout uh the rest of you i hope that you enjoyed the show I hope that it was a great overview of how you can continue to tactically and practically use AI as you're building your marketing strategies and trying to grow your businesses. And we'll be back with you really soon on the next episode of Marketing Against the Grain. See everybody real soon. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history, calls, support tickets, emails, and... Here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot. Grow better. 